I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for a drive. The 22 Infiniti QX80 without launch control brake boost. A torque pulls. Horsepower and torque. 400 horsepower and 413 pound feet of torque from a 5.6 liter naturally aspirated V8. And this is body on frame. Yes, it is. This and, is very old school. And this is our second Infinity out of 500 cars we reviewed so far on our channel. Yeah, so we drove the, what was that called? The QX50 Red Sport? No, the Q50S Red Sport. Anyways, let's get into what this is. It's been around for like over 10 years, but now it's been fully, ref not fully refreshed, refreshed enough, especially on the inside where we have all new infotainment. Yeah, and it's been refreshed with its Nissan partner, the Nissan Armada, which is uh, basically exactly the same as this on the inside and somewhat different on the outside. And then I guess, what would this compete with? Uh, this competes with some pretty heavy hitters like the Cadillac Escalade, the new Jeep Grand Wagoneer, uh, Lincoln, Chevy Tahoe, Lincoln Navigator. Lincoln Navigator. Uh, this is big players. What, and then we also have the German ones too. What's about, what about the big Lexus? What's that one? Oh, the LX, uh, whatever number it is, 570 or something. Yeah, and then the Germans like the X7 and the GLS. Yeah, but not as much with those. No, not really. And if you like our videos, share it with one of your friends. I'm gonna pause the video right now for five seconds so you have a chance to do it. Pause. Okay, what do you want to start with? Uh, I think we should probably start with the looks because that is the biggest differentiating factor from the Nissan Armada. And if you're shopping for an Infiniti QX80, click the True Car link in the description below. Okay, starting with the front end, mostly compared to older generations, I really like the big forehead style hood. It that, looked like a beluga whale before. Yeah, that the old ones used to have. This one, however, looks totally awesome. The grille, the headlights, it looks wicked. It's, it's a pretty car, but it's also kind of very imposing due to its size. Yeah, and from the driving position, you see the hood. It's almost like you're driving a muscle car really high up. Yeah, like I, I really like how this one looks. Okay, and then I guess side view, it's huge. Yeah, it's, it's definitely huge. And the biggest thing that I noticed from the side is the overhang out back, actually. Yeah, the whole the proportions are a little awkward, but it works. I like the, the way the window chrome wraps around the side and everything. The body lines are very smooth. We, yeah. We've got running boards, which is nice to get into this because it is pretty big off the ground. And the biggest disappointment I have from the side is the size of these wheels. I think they should have been a lot bigger and perhaps even differently designed. Yeah, I mean, I would prefer Ford Giattos on here, big, huge ones. I think I actually would on this one as well. And what's the Continental recommended tire for a QX80? It's the ones that we're rolling on, the Ice Contact Extreme. So at least we got that going for it. So let's send it into cliche corner since I'm already here on these tires. And I mean, it grips pretty well considering the conditions. It's currently not snowing, but it did just finish snowing. And yes, this is a big body on frame SUV and it does feel like that. The biggest thing that I notice is how light the steering is. It's like exceptionally light. Hey, hey, back to the looks. Okay, sorry. What is this color? It's a dark blue. Uh, yeah, I forget what it's called, but it's an optional paint that you have to pay for. Nice pearl color, but there is a champagne available. And if you guys saw our Nissan Rogue long-term tester, I love the champagne color. This is also kind of a Nissan. Get me this in champagne with some bigger wheels. This will be one of the coolest looking SUVs, I think, this year. I would actually agree with you for once on that. Like 100%. Yeah, but, I, this but, is a really good looking SUV. But this color is pretty nice right now, but we can't get it to pop in the sun because there's no sun because it's winter and it's overcast. But moving on to the rear end. Tail, it's pretty nice. Very, very nice design. But above that, there's so much room because yeah. it's such a big SUV. And then that's where you see like the rear bumper overhang and everything. It's just, it's very awkward in the back, the, but cool. The load floor is like nipple height. <laughs> it's, uh, it's quite high. And then we've got the little area for the trailer hitch. How much can this tow if we wanted to tow stuff? 8,500 pounds, which is quite a bit. Yes. I don't know exactly how much that is in jet skis, but... That's a lot. That's, that's like two trailers worth of jet skis, maybe like, I'd say eight jet skis. Good old body on frame V8. And then to end off the rear looks, there's one exhaust tip on the right side. Yeah, that's it. It's not fake. It's just there. That's, they didn't try and do anything weird. Should we listen to it from the... We definitely should, from the outside. 
And how about from the inside? Oh yeah. Very satisfying. It's not like tuned to be super fast. It seems like it's tuned to be super smooth. It's a luxury SUV. Yeah, and it does sound pretty good. It's definitely pretty well insulated in here. You still get that like nice naturally aspirated V8 tone. This is the exact same powertrain that you got in the Nissan Titan and basically in the Armada minus a couple horsepower, at least according to marketing. But it's, it's the same powertrain. I still really like it, but you have a seven speed auto in this and it shifts really quickly. Like watch this. Did two gears right there. It rips. Good thing it's not CVT or something. Oh, thank God it's not. But you can also use the shifter to uh, manually shift this and downshift, and it does actually work, which is kind of surprising for this. Yo, since this platform is so old, I bet you there was a combination of like all the guts in here that wasn't manual. Perhaps. Maybe. Someone <laughs> let us know. Nissan historians. <laughs> yeah. Maybe as like a, as a as a Titan or something like that, but. Anyways, uh, so the way that this handles and performs on the road, the suspension's really comfortable, like no issues considering it's body on frame, it's very comfortable. It's not as comfortable as an Escalade with air suspension, but I have no complaints. Yeah, this is just a solid, nice, comfortable, easy driving, easy steering, big old SUV. Yeah. And that's rare these days. Everything it, is like something crazy or like you gotta drive a low power Telluride, which was actually uh, Venom Carnage movie was sponsored by Kia and they had like all the instead of Tahoe's being police like SUVs it was all Tellurides I'm like yo Telluride wouldn't be able to catch these cars yeah that's not, clearly sponsored <laughs> yeah it's not Telluride GT come on yeah and this is fully independent suspension front and rear and this can also level the rear suspension as well which is pretty nice so if you're gonna have some heavy hitters sitting in the back in the third row it should level that out if you've got a lot of stuff back there it should level that out okay what if we pop the trunk and look at how much room we have with all the seats folded down quite a bit of room and even with all three rows up yes this is a three row we actually have a good amount of room to stack carry-ons in the very, very back. Yeah, and sitting in each row is actually quite comfortable, except the back row because the seat is basically bolted to the floor, so my knees are in my face, but headroom and everything else is actually quite good. For this not being a minivan, there that's totally enough room for the third row. But, like, the new Escalade actually has, I'd say, the best now, and the Tahoe and everything because they switched their suspension. Is this not an 11-year-old platform that they're still refreshing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then whatever. It's not really whatever because you can buy those other cars now. Oh my god! People, it's not. It's not. Oh my god! Because you don't want. Not everyone wants a Tahoe. Something you sometimes you want something that's like slightly different, slightly more stylish, and that's this. And then you have to sacrifice the back row, but you don't sit in the back row because you bought the car. So who cares? I mean, you don't care about your children if you have like six kids in here. I'm sure the children aren't six foot two. And Maybe they are. Care. Maybe they're taking care of the younger children because that's your family problems. So then the six foot two sits in the middle row and the younger ones in the back. It all makes perfect sense. It doesn't. But anyways, uh, so let's talk about some other stuff like this interior, which is exactly the same as the Nissan Armada. With me behind the wheel? Yes. I'm just going to mash it and do manual shifting. I figured you were going to do that. Ooh, it even hangs. All right, good power, but never ever shift this thing manually. Yeah, a little bit slow on the manual shifts. So in terms of drive modes, we have auto, four high, four low, tow mode, traction off, and snow mode. And if you put it in auto and do a U-turn, you'll kind of notice that it's full rear wheel drive. And if you put it in four high and do a U-turn, you'll notice things binding. So that's how you know it's actually like doing stuff. Yeah, so it is rear wheel drive bias, but you can't actually control how much rear wheel drive because I assume as soon as it senses slip, it will power the front. So now the rest of this interior, the general look of everything actually looks pretty luxurious. The seats look nice, lots of leather, lots of shiny materials that are kind of piano black, but they actually have a pattern below there. Yeah, so I'm kind of actually okay with that because it looks like a wood pattern. Yeah, I think it looks nice enough. I mean, it looks kind of old, but not in like a bad way, more like in a classic way. Like it doesn't have a full LCD screen across everything and like capacitive mind reading buttons right. like the new cars will have. Right, and then because we now have this updated infotainment system, this actually looks quite nice and it actually functions really well. Yeah, the old one I guess was the old like double screen yeah, kind of like which stuff is like that horrible. like, it's like, which is honestly, kind of the reason we haven't reviewed any infinities like uh, yeah. the last couple of years. We're like, we hate this. It's and so bad. We don't feel the need 
to just poop all over this car's infotainment. Because they're all the same. And the, I hated the steering on that thing. This is just fine. There's no 42 different steering modes. Yeah, this is chill. And then the infotainment and the gauge cluster is pretty much exactly from that Rogue long-term tester that we had. And if you want more in-depth stuff on that, check out that video. But it works really well. We got a volume knob, tuning knob, wireless and wired Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. We've got a wireless charger below that like you kind of slide it in here, but you didn't like it because it slid around. Yeah, so your phone slides around and you end up having to open this again and adjust your phone. So it's kind of stupid. But wired CarPlay for the win anyways. Yep. And then the infotainment, not only is it touchscreen, you can also control it with this commander rotary dial down here, which is cool because that's what all luxury cars have. That is a sign of luxury. Speaking of luxury that other cars also have, uh, the Nissan Armada has everything that we just described. Exactly identical. It's definitely weird. It is weird. Except, the, oh, the badge is different. Okay, does it have a 360 camera like this does? I would assume it's exactly the same considering we recently drove the Nissan Frontier and the quality is identical to this. Yeah, it's, it's bad quality, it's old stuff. And I watched like this Infinity USA thing about it. It was like really scripted, awkward video, like pretty hilarious. And they're like, you could see everything. They're like, they're talking about how luxurious it is. So they show the camera I'm like, yo, like get farther back so you can't really see how bad it is. But <laughs> you can see everything and there is a hard camera button, which is very helpful because this big beluga whale hood Little kids running in front, you won't see it. So you got to click that button before you start driving sometimes. And it's got a very shapely hood from the inside. It looks really good. Yeah, it's got very smooth body lines and it looks great. Okay, but back to this interior. These seats are comfortable. They're not well bolstered. They don't need to be. They just need to be comfortable. We don't have any massages, which is, you know, a thing that luxury cars in this class usually have. Yeah, but we got heated and cooled. And what's good about these seats being basic Lincoln seats. Oh, yes, you're the right. 90,000 way adjustable, totally suck, can't get comfortable. Yep. And I feel like there's a lot of other random cars that we haven't gotten comfortable in. This, very comfortable in every single row. Yeah, for sure. Now, moving on to the middle row, we have screens on both headrests and they look very nice. It comes with a little remote that nobody's used before. So I peeled all that stuff off, opened it up. You can do USB, you can do a bunch of different casting things but I don't know how any of that works with an iPhone. I'm not gonna mess with it. So I guess I would just like, load episodes of something on an SD card and put it in there or USB. Is there HDMI? The HDMI. All you need is a fire stick. I got a fire stick recently and I'm obsessed with it. You just plug it in, you're good to but go. But then you need to like use a hotspot. Yeah, something. yeah. But this does have a Wi-Fi hotspot. Like I kind of want to just play like old school video games in a car, keep it chill. Like the old uh, Chrysler minivan stuff, like playing chess or checkers or something. Right, exactly. I feel like that, they should keep that for car stuff. You know what I mean? I agree. So I actually don't know what quality it is. Like it might be 480 screens. <laughs> Yeah, potentially. Potentially. And a cool thing about this infotainment is that even though it's kind of built on an old platform with upgrades, it has USB and USB-C, which a lot of new cars don't have. They'll have one or the other. This makes it a lot easier for this transitionary period of cables. And a little boot into cliche corner, traction on and mm. everything auto. Yeah. It's doing a good job of cutting power and keeping me from flying into the other lane. Oh, cut <laughs> power perfectly there. You can definitely feel it understeer. But it, it like, with it, traction off, it lets you plow out. Yeah. Traction on kept me in my lane while driving like a total jerk. Yep. Which is great. Which is not how anyone would ever really realistically drive this. You never know. Yeah. Well, probably in a straight line. You know, imagine like a 16 year old getting their license and like taking this out and driving it like aggressively. That would be scary for everyone else on the road. I mean, this thing weighs like <laughs> 6,000 pounds. Like, yeah, you could you could do some damage in this. I was watching the IIHS uh, YouTube page for crash to safety, and they have like a new test to make up for uh, side impacts for gigantic how gigantic all the vehicles are. And they should. Like, the CX-5 was the only SUV of like mid-sized SUVs that did really well in that test compared to everyone else. How did the smart car do? I don't think it exists anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it, it drove on top of it. Actually. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> And then to go back to the third row, to get in, it's actually pretty easy. You just click the thing on the seat and it folds down very quickly. And then you have an electronic button there to raise or lower it, which you can also do from the very back. And how about these cup holders, Yuri? They look pretty good to me. Jacob, how did they do? Totally fine with a medium. And let's check the visors. Ooh, these things are huge. Three, two, one. Oh, come on. They got a big extension though. And but... they're, they're really bad because they got this like hard edge on the yeah. outside. Like wow. probably the worst quality visors of the year. If I rub my hand on this long enough, I will bleed. Yeah. I'm going to stop that. And to end everything off, this does have a lot of safety features, blind spot monitoring, all that cool stuff. 
it does not have the really good lane keep that the Rogue has, but it does have a radar cruise lane keep that works all right. Yeah, it's got the lane keep that will sort of reel you back in once it's pretty much too late. Yeah, which sucks because I really like that Rogue lane keep, which is kind of one of the reasons that's stopping me from purchasing this personally. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you're not, pers- <laughs> you're not <laughs> yeah. purchasing this personally at Yeah, all. yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> but I bet some of the other newer Infinities that we haven't driven that are like, you know, the new, new ones like the QX60 or the QX55 or something like that those should have well even the one we drove like four years ago the one out of 500 yes. had the really good lane keep so with all that out of the way let's get to the price this starts at eighty one thousand six hundred and ninety five dollars canadian and this one that we're driving is ninety two thousand five hundred and forty dollars pretty expensive but it has to compete with luxury brands so they have no choice but pricing it there however the nissan armada starts at sixty nine thousand dollars canadian and you basically get everything that you get in an infinity look and i get that but it's like driving a Volkswagen Golf compared to an Audi S3. Like, you need to do that jump. Yeah, but this needs the luxury features on the inside to also go with that price tag because that's like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 difference for just the looks on the outside, essentially. But for some people, the looks and the image, it makes sense. Like for this, sure. This in Champagne compared to any single Armada you could spec, like, looks-wise, this is way, way better. I agree, but fifteen to 20000 that's for somebody to decide. Uh, as a decision for me, no. So overall, I think this is a pretty cool looking SUV. One of the cooler looking luxury SUVs right now. And if you're looking to get your own, tsp.truecar.com. Click the link in the description. Discounted price offers on new cars. So overall, I don't think this offers enough in this luxury class to really compete. I would definitely take the Escalade over this. And I like these seats more than the Navigator seats. Okay, so let us know. Let us know what you guys think.